What's up everybody, Josh from Josh Kid Films. I just wanted to come and make this quick video. Um, recently I bought the Zcam E2 M4 and my intention was to pair it with my F6. Um, when I started shooting with it, I ran into some noise issues, mainly in the blacks and the shadows uh, that were problematic and it, it frustrated me because everyone says this is an amazing camera and I really had high expectations for it. Um, so I kind of started exploring and I put together this test to try to isolate what was causing me um, the noise issues. I actually found since I've made this that there was something going on weird in my uh, processing chain. And I was using a LUT that looks really great on my F6. Uh, but for whatever reason, when I throw it on the M4, it causes a lot of noise issues. Um, when I do basic contrast and saturation on the M4, uh, just manually in Resolve, it, there's no issue at all. It's not a, there's not a prevalent amount of noise or anything like that. But anyway, it led to me making this test, which is basically I'm going to take the M4, the S6, and the F6, as well as the Pocket 4K and the 6K, kind of all the way through their exposure range, um, just so you guys can see what what is there. The first few, the first time we do it, it'll be log, and the second time it'll just be basic contrast and saturation. And then I'm going to kind of go through each one where there were two stops overexposed or two stops underexposed and try to recover them and see what happens. And I'm going to kind of narrate as I go along. Okay, so uh, a couple of things before I start. I just want to mention this is not like crazy scientific perfect test like you'd get from Cinema 5D or something like that. Um, I'm just doing my best to try to stay consistent and uh, do the best I can with it. And so here we go, let's just begin. I'm gonna kind of narrate as I go. I've got the waveform up here so you can see where everything's kind of living. And uh, we'll start with the E2 M4. I'm gonna go ahead and start it here and you'll see I'm gonna start taking it up through its range, um, trying to push it basically to 100 or get really close to that. And then uh, I'm going to take it down, do the same thing to where it's very underexposed. And you guys just be kind of watching in the frame and seeing if you're seeing any visible noise issues um, that you guys would think would be an issue. There's a little bit of noise happening right here in the blacks when we're way underexposed. Um, and we'll see later when we grade it if that's an issue. Um, and that's probably what I was seeing a little bit of um, that was bothering me. But when you expose correctly, you don't see it at all. Um, so that's something I'm gonna talk about. Here's the S6, um, a little bit brighter just by default at the same settings, which was 400 ISO and 5000 Kelvin at 2.8. And then I'm bringing it up here, um, kind of pushing it to 100. And then I'm gonna bring it down as well. And when I'm bringing it down, since I'm already set at such a low ISO, I'm using the aperture to kind of close it down and darken it up. Um, and so I'm going to take the S6 here all the way down. And this is a bit of a nerdy video. If you're looking for like pretty images, this isn't the one for you. Um, but there's the range of the S6. Let's see here if I go any lower. I think that's where I landed. Okay, um, no, I do go, to, go even darker here. Okay, sorry for the shaking on the tripod. That's when I'm changing my aperture. Um, but there we go, pretty underexposed. And then I just bring it back up to where I started. Um, so let's go, I think, next to the F6 right here. And it's pretty similar to the S6 as far as overall starting exposure and taking it up here to 100. I'm using the Takamar 5518 in case you're interested. So that's at about 100 there. And then we'll take it down. I don't think any of these cameras, maybe the M4 just a little bit, have shown a super amount of noise. Um, there was a little bit of noise in the blacks on the M4, and now you see just a little bit um, also in the F6 here in the very underexposed part. And just resetting it back to where I started here. Okay, so this is the Pocket 6K. In general, it's gonna be a little cleaner, I think, just because I think it does a little bit more noise reduction in camera. I actually turned the noise reduction off on the Z-Cam, so there's nothing happening to reduce the noise. 
So here we go, pushing this all the way up as much as I can. And then even more. Okay, here we go, start bringing it down, closing the aperture up here. Okay, even more. Doesn't look super dark on the log, but it will once you grade it. Okay, so this is the 4K, taking it up. And so one thing to note is we had to jump to the second circuit, 1250 or higher ISO to even get it to this amount of brightness. So you'll notice here in the highlights, it just doesn't have the highlight range once you jump to that second circuit. But if you were in this situation in real life, you would have to use higher than 400 ISO if you didn't have lighting. So it's pretty relevant, I think. Now we're here we go, we're crushing it um, by closing down the aperture. And we're back at the 400 ISO, so you, you can see it's a good bit cleaner too. And um, just better overall highlight retention here. But that's pretty crushed on, on that side of things. Good bit under. And then just resetting it back to where we started. Okay, so now I'm going to jump to the graded version. And this is just contrast at 1.6, I believe, in resolve, and then saturation at 65. So not doing a ton here. Um, on the M4 here, you can see there's a little bit of noise. You see it when you go way brighter. Um, but you'll also see later when I uh, expose to the over, fix the overexposure, that noise kind of goes away. Um, but let's see here when we go under two, if it, if it jumps out. It's really not that bad on the underexposure. Um, you can't even really see it, which is a good thing because that was an issue that I was having on, and I felt like you could see a lot of uh, noise in the blacks and look at look at all the way exposed here you, you don't see anything um, you would if you raised it obviously uh, but overall pretty clean across the range on the M4 which I was I was happy to see um, once again we're not using any noise reduction in camera so that would probably get rid of some of this noise in the blacks let's look at the S6 I was really impressed with the S6 overall um, it just is very clean, uh, probably the cleanest of the flagship models. Um, you do see a little bit of noise here when it's very bright, um, but once again, once it's graded and it's brought down and compensated, it goes away. And you'll see here when you go lower, um, you can't really see noise at all, which is, which is cool. That's what you want. You want to see clean blacks. I guess I didn't stay down there very long to fix that. Oh, there we go. Okay, here we go, starting to crush it here. Yeah, you look at how clean these blacks are in this underexposure. You, you don't really see it at all. Now, if you raised your image up, obviously you would see it, but you're not having any noise issues just from, from underexposing in general, which is good. Clean blacks are good. Um, so let's jump to the F6. This one didn't seem to like underexposure as much. Um, which is interesting because it's a full frame sensor. You can kind of see a little bit of noise here too uh, when you raise it up super bright. Um, which is interesting. I think all this would go away once you grade it. Um, I like to expose my F6 just kind of right in the 60 IRE. So I'm not really underexposing or overexposing it. I'm just kind of exposing it um, right at middle gray. And so it's still pretty clean here when you go way under. You don't really see any issues in the blacks. The blacks are clean, um, which is good. That's what you want. And then we'll bring it up and just kind of set it back to our starting point. I don't think any of these cameras are producing an amount of noise that is going to be visible after grading appropriately or exposing uh, correctly. Here's the 6K, and you see the noise is here in the 6K too. I think that's just when you brighten something up that significantly. Um, and also, you know, you're pushing to a higher ISO to try to get that level of exposure. Um, you're going to see it a little bit. And so uh, that's something that goes away when you grade it. But wow, well, yeah, it's, it's pretty prevalent here. And that's because we're just at the higher ISO, probably. Um, I really cranked it up here on this one. Uh, let's see. 
start bringing it down. I've noticed the Pocket 6K overall seems to have much better highlight retention um, even in that second circuit than the 4K. And you'll kind of see that here in a second. Um, but once you start underexposing, you'll notice the blacks are pretty clean um, on this as well. No issues there, clean blacks, which is good. Okay, and then the 4K here, we're going to push it, and you see once you jump to that second circuit, you kind of lose those highlights. Um, it just doesn't retain them as well on the second circuit. Uh, when you jump back down to 400, like we will in a second, you'll see it will just kind of pop right back into place. Um, it's good to know. That's why a lot of people probably want to shoot these pockets at 400. But yeah, see right here, it totally goes away. Um, wants to kind of see it at 400, use it at 400, use lighting, so you don't have to jump into that circuit, uh, second circuit, but it is, no. I mean, that's sometimes you can't avoid it, and so it's something to know that, you know, the Pocket 4K doesn't quite have the same highlight retention once you jump into that second circuit as it does um, from 400 to 1,000. But here under the under, but here um, as we underexpose, the blacks are very clean, and you've got really nice highlight retention there, so, um, overall pretty good. So now we're going to jump into where I've kind of corrected these shots and so this is the E2M4 where I went, brought it down from overexposure. Um, let me go back real quick. Let's see if I can just play it in reverse. There we go. Okay so this is the E2M4 with two stops um, brought back down and it does a really good job retaining these highlights without them feeling blown and it's, it's not noisy at all. I did apply some, just some basic noise reduction that I apply on any shot that I grade um, just to see what would happen. And so let's move on. Um, it is a lot noisier um, in the shot where I've brought it back up from two stops underexposed. One thing you guys will notice throughout this test is the Z-Log2, it does not like underexposure. Um, it's, it's just not, it's not the type of thing that you wanna underexpose. Uh, the pockets they handle that much better than the Z cams. That doesn't mean the Z cams have an issue there. It just means that to really properly use Z log, uh, it's not really meant to be underexposed, and so that's okay. Um, as long as you know that that's the case, you can work around that. Um, so let's keep playing it here. It's a little bit noisy. Um, the recovered one, even with the noise reduction, this is the S six brought back down, and it's super clean. Uh, there's no noise in that at all. Let me go back uh, one second. Okay. And so, uh, you know, it looks great. Um, still have pretty good highlight retention. It's, none of this feels blown, uh, which is good because we pushed it quite a bit. And then um, the recovered here is very clean. I was very impressed with the S6 and its ability to recover. It was more in line with the pockets, um, which is good because you get really good highlight recovery as well, no matter what ISO you're at. So it's a pretty balanced camera overall, I would say. Um, and then let's go here to the F6 is next. Um, this is the F6 brought down. It looks great. It doesn't have any noise at all. Um, retains the highlights really well with that 15 stop dynamic range. And then uh, if we go to the recover negative two stops, you'll see it's pretty bad. Um, there's a major color shift to the green and it's pretty noisy. Um, so, you know, you would say, why would that be the case? This is a full frame sensor. Uh, just because it's full frame doesn't mean that you can underexpose a ton. Um, Z-Log doesn't like to be underexposed and the F6 especially doesn't like to be underexposed. So just know that as you're working with it, uh, that you don't really want to do that. If you can help it, it's better to uh, expose correctly, even if it's at a higher ISO and um, to let that uh, be the way you do it. So this is the pocket uh, 6K recovered and you'll notice that the highlights here are not as good as the Z cams. Um, it's still there. It's better than the 4K um, but it's a little bit better on the Z cam. The pockets really shine on the underexposure recovery and you guys if you saw the Cinema 5D test uh, that was an area that both of them did really well in and so there's a very minimal noise and um, it looks pretty good overall. Um, this is the 4K 
brought down and you see you really lost those highlights there because you know we were at the second circuit and so those are totally blown and especially right here I can't really hit that back um, and so you have to know if you're set shooting in that second circuit you know you got to watch your highlights you got to protect them and then here's two stops recovered is also pretty good um, very minimal noise so the pockets do really well uh, with the underexposure recovery and what that tells me is you know you want to protect your highlights on the pocket 4k for sure uh, because you know you can bring it up a little bit um, without a whole lot of noise and then on the, the Z cams you kind of want to air on the side of exposed to the right um, because it doesn't do as well with underexposure recovery and um, it does really well with highlight recovery so you know after doing this test I kind of see how each each uh, brand is different and you know I've said in my other video I think the pockets are a little bit easier to use because um, you can see here you know you don't have to be necessarily perfect on your exposure as long as it's not crazy you're good you're golden um, the Z cams you know you need to be a little bit more careful how you expose them um, and a little bit just more skillful um, and to know how to expose them um, but overall the image I think it looks really good and you have a lot of highlight range in the Z cams that you might not have once you jump to that second circuit on the pockets so knowing both of those things I think it kind of helps you to compare them I don't think any of these cameras have a real noise issue um, as long as you expose them correctly um, the issues come when you don't expose correctly and then try to fix it in post Anyway, hopefully that was helpful um, and you guys can compare these. Anyway, let me let me know what you guys think. Um, I'm noticing here a little bit of that black magic red that it's so famous for. It looks kind of weird. Um, anyway, uh, we'll make another video about that. You guys have a great day.